I'm dead. Hey, this is Tony Gardner. I'm the Chucky guy and producer now on the new film Cult of Chucky, and I'm super excited to take your questions live here from the set in Winnipeg, California. So let's get started. Well, thank you, Tony. First question comes from Artie Vargas, and the question is, how difficult is it to maintain Chucky's iconic look from the past films into the new films? Um, well, Chucky's had a lot of different looks through time, and I think what we're trying to do this time is make an effort to go back to what do you look like at the beginning and make sure that it's really true to the character. So it's been kind of difficult because all of our reference has really been uh, mostly just photos and honestly like old VHS copies. I mean the quality is not really good but we're making the effort and we're engaging the fan base and we're trying to use everybody to help us be true to his point of origin more in this one. Cool. It's a struggle but it's been fun. Our next question comes from Giovanni Ricardo Griffey. What's the most challenging thing about making Chucky scarier in every movie? Um, it's kind of Funny, actually, I don't know that it's hard to make him scary uh, just because of what he's doing, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's actually harder to put uh, personality into him because he's, he's this inanimate object that we have to get seven or eight puppeteers inside of, in a way, inside his mind to operate his face and everything else and, and act as one person. So I think that's probably the hardest part, the killing is actually easy, that's probably not the best thing to say, but um, we all kind of know what we're doing when it comes to that part. Our next question comes from Nick Sultana, and Nick asks, with Cult of Chucky, will the gore factor go up a level, or will it be minimal and focus on the story? Uh, this is an interesting one, because the story is a lot more complex this time, and uh, I think the gore level kind of goes up as a result of that. Um, I think you're going to kind of get a bit of both, and I also feel like um, he's not at a loss really this go around for weapons, so I think there's going to be more variety in, in what he does. Our next question comes from David Gallup, and David asks, so tell me, how is Chucky Offset? Is he a pretty mellow dude? Uh, Chucky Offset's really pretty laid back. He just literally kind of hangs out and does absolutely nothing. Um, we got to kind of work with him to, to get him up to speed when it's time to go. Jaden Christopher would like to ask, will the Chucky puppet be returning or will it be another CGI character? Uh, it is the Chucky puppet the whole time. They actually experimented with some CG stuff on Curse of Chucky and it didn't go over too well. It, um, it kind of put the nail in the coffin, I think, for the CG stuff in general, but I mean, the truth of it is, it's a talking doll. It's a doll that's come to life, so why wouldn't you use a real doll and have your actors able to interact with it and pick it up and, and actually physically be threatened by it? Spartan Gaming would like to ask, what was the most challenging special effect thing to do for a Chucky film? Hmm. The most challenging thing for me, I think, was probably on Seed of Chucky. and. Um, it was the day where I was in it and I play a special effects guy in the movie, in the movie, and I'm gonna die at the hands of Chucky and Tiffany. So that shooting day actually involved me operating the facial features of some of the characters as well as sort of directing the puppeteers and supervising the performance of 27 uh, performers bringing the three characters to life because Glenn actually comes into the scene as well then I had to act, I had, to, I had a body of myself that was set up so that I could be decapitated. I had to rig that, um, I had to do the acting intro to it, rig it, then operate one of the puppets, killing myself, then clean all the blood off, and then kind of continue on with the day. So that was probably the most difficult, but um, when it was over, it was the most fun, because it was probably the craziest thing anybody's ever asked me to do. Liam Henry would like to ask, how many dolls and animatronic puppets are used per Chucky film? Okay, there's, there's several good guy dolls that are the, the static, non-functional dolls that you can carry around. There's probably three of those. There's a poseable body, 
Uh, there's a stand-in Chucky. Then there's an animatronic good guy. And then as Chucky becomes possessed or l looks more evil, we have uh, different levels of animatronic dolls for that. And there's two mechanical heads. There's six skins that we can swap out. There's seven bodies. There's three mechanical bodies. There's six arm skins. There's two weapon hands designed to hold specific weapons. Uh, and then there's about a dozen pairs of shoes and I think eight outfits. So we're responsible for all that on set. And it's kind of like if you think of Mr. Potato Head where we're mixing and matching the pieces to put a Chucky together to do a scene, we might take part of that one apart and use that arm and that head for the action that he has to do in the next scene. And because we're shooting everything out of continuity, um, that happens more frequently than anything else. It's very rare that we go through and just keep the same look and stay in continuity order. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge. Sky Strands Strengths would like to ask, how comes Chucky didn't blend, didn't bleed when stabbed by Fiona in The Curse of Chucky? I always wondered this because in the other films he would bleed when shot or stabbed because he was turning human inside the doll. Um, I'm actually right with you on that one. I don't know why he blew up stuffing other than I think Don thought it looked cool that it was kind of snowing in that scene. Um, there seems to be a bit of uh, back and forth with how fast is he becoming human and when he, like in Seed of Chucky, takes his arm off and mails it in a box. It's like there's still the ball and socket aspect of his body there, but there's still all this like live meat around it. So I think, I think it's a little flexible in that realm and we actually really defer to Don. So um, I know Don's gonna do Facebook Live here at some point. So. I think you should save that question and you should ask Don Mancini. And then I will watch and I will know as well. Our next question comes from David Testament. <laughs> what is your favorite Chucky movie and your favorite Chucky kill? Um, let's see, my favorite Chucky movie is probably actually Cult of Chucky. The stuff that we're having to do is really challenging and with all the new technology, uh, even from the skins up to the machinery, I think we're able to bring him to life in a way that we've never been able to before. And having the studio back us up with doing uh, rod removal and being able to rod puppet him, I think we're getting a lot more life out of it. And then the second question was? Um, what's your favorite kill? Um, well, it's a good question. As far as favorite kill, I think there's one in here that I think you'll find pretty interesting. Um, that's probably my favorite right now, but to reference stuff that you've seen, uh, it would probably be um, when I died, just because it was so crazy. Keith Moon asks, what is your favorite <coughs> memory filming the series? What is your favorite memory filming the series? My favorite memory? It, it always comes down to the people that you work with, um, no matter what you're working on. If you're working with people that suck, the whole experience sucks. And all my experiences have been really good. so. I have to say my favorite memory is really the crew, the people that we're working with, um, Don Mancini, David Kirshner, everybody involved from the beginning all the way to, through to the end. It's really part of a family and that dynamic is really important and there's a level of trust and um, support that you get from each other that just makes going to work a lot of fun. So my favorite memory, I guess, is, is pretty much the whole experience, really. It's kind of sad when it's over. Um, Sean Bedard would like to ask, if you could have Chucky have a crossover movie with any other horror icon, who would it be and why? Um, I, I would actually pick uh, Freddy Krueger because I think the two of them are, are kind of messed up. They both have weapons at their disposal. They both have a little bit of that fiery attitude and they're both really quick with the wit. Um, I, I think the two of them... Barring the height difference, I think the two of them would be a really great matchup. They both seem to really enjoy what they do and, and literally get a laugh out of it. I think it would be funny to see the banter back and forth. Michael Volstad Berg would like to ask, what are your thoughts on the fan base in 2017? Uh, okay, my thoughts on the fan base in 2017 um, are really just the fact that they're kind of invaluable. 
uh, we actually, well, I actually sort of went after the fan base on this one and um, asked, their quest asked them questions, asked opinions. Uh, we turned a fan in uh, Wisconsin named Garrett Zima into our unofficial historian, and he provided us with all sorts of reference pieces and, and actually, like, uh, pieces from original films that, I mean, the fans had remolded over time and it was kind of distorted, but we, we had physical reference pieces and we had uh, people with a lot of knowledge that were like at our fingertips and we took advantage of that. There's uh, a gentleman in Korea who does replica outfits and we had him do the outfit that's on the stand in Chucky. It's like I'm really trying to involve the fan base and make them be a part of this experience, not just be watching it from a distance, but actually be a little integrated and literally integrated into it. So I think they're pretty invaluable and it's been, it's been pretty amazing. And I think they're going to be really happy with this film. I, I really went into it with the fan base in mind and making sure that it's true to its point of origin and in all the proportions and the fabrics and the colors and the textures, everything, the design of the eyes, everything is, is really back to square one and just push to the, to the, you know, as far as we can as, with technology. Our next, our next question is coming while we've been going live. Um, how's the technology changed since your, the first movie that you did? The first film we were kind of literally tethered to a puppet. We had um, all these cables coming out of the back end of the puppet and everybody operated a specific function. The head movement was somebody moving a big lever left and right and up and down. Someone else did the torso. The, all the body language was divided amongst so many people. And as we've continued to move forward, we've streamlined that. And now a lot of the times we have somebody's hand up into the head. All the motors are moved back and smaller so that there's room for hand. And we can have it operate as a true puppet. And all those movements are compound with one, just one person. Or we can actually put a rod out the top of his head and puppeteer um, puppeteer the head movement from above so we can go into spaces that we couldn't fit an operator into or fit all these cables into. Then we can add rods to the backs of elbows and have mechanical arms that are rod puppeted that um, we can have the rods removed digitally. So we're able to get in really close to the puppet now and give it a lot more personality and make movements that are a lot more subtle and a lot more specific. Um, so it's, it's really sort of tightened up the performance and actually allowed us to do more performance as opposed to just like making a move. Our next question comes from Benjamin Jeffers. He says, how long did it take to do the animation puppetry in The Curse of Chucky? Boy, all the puppetry happens live on set with us. So we were shooting for probably about six weeks and he's on set almost every day in that film. So we spent probably two months building, then six weeks of shooting, and then I think we had another couple days after that of actual performance stuff. Our next question is from Joseph Zimmerman. How hard was it syncing the, the, the puppet to the track? Also, if you practice, do you practice to other vocal tracks as well? That might be a funny gag reel to see Chucky or something, or say a line from a classic movie or something. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. When we started this process on Seed, uh, working with the lip sync anim animatronic stuff and, and the, the ability to record a line of dialogue and then lip sync to it and play back. Um, when we first met our British um, uh, co-puppeteers on Seed, uh, there was quite a bit of syncing him up to YMCA and a bunch of other things that were totally inappropriate for the character, but hilarious to do. I'm sure there's probably some video footage of it out there somewhere. Uh, but most everything we, we do is actually specific to the show. So it's going to be Brad Dorif's performance. Um, and we take that and we feed it into a computer. And the computer is able to record, because our drive system is hooked up to the computer, it's able to record us performing them all. So we can record that and then play it back um, and have it talk live on set with the audio track. And our last question comes from Kira Gardner. She says, when are you coming home, Dad? I will be leaving here in one week, Kara, and then I get to go back home. Kenny Gardner, thank you. Thank you. I have to go back to set. See you guys.